Hey friends, welcome tonight to this live session. Um, if you're out there, give me some hearts, some likes, and um, let me know who's watching and where you're watching from. It's, um, it's Wednesday and it's um, a rainy day here in New York tonight where I am. And so tonight we're, we have a really good session that, uh, a good topic I should say, a really good topic that I'm excited to speak with you about. And this thing is circulating all over YouTube, okay? And so I wanna shed some light on what this proposal is and um, what the, this proposal is and who it impacts and where it's gonna, well, not where it's gonna go, who can predict the future, but you guys need to understand what is being debated right now, what's on the table and how it may touch you down the road. So let me back up and let me introduce myself for those of you who are new to me. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York and also the founder of Smart Immigration Academy. Um, and I have my contact information right above here so that you guys can call the office 24 hours, book your appointment to meet with me, and let's talk about your immigration issue and case and uh, see how we may help you. Now, we work with clients all over the world, so it doesn't matter where you guys are in the world. We can uh, still work on your case. So it's good to see Diane on. Diane is watching from Trinidad. And I, uh, Diane, it's nice to see you. I have some Academy members who are also in Trinidad. Um, um, nice to see you, Kaylana. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Pamela, it's nice to see you always. Always nice to see some Academy members on here. Um, Carmen is watching from Fresno, California, I'm assuming, right? Um, good to see you. Um, and Kip. Hi, Kip. Kip is watching from uh, Atlanta. So guys, we have people from all over the world watching tonight. We have LA in the house with Eve. We have Jorge, Jorge from Boston, Boston, right? Jorge is in Boston. And then uh, Alan, thanks for watching from Dallas. Wow, I'm so excited. And I see Minnesota also in the house. Hi, Joe, nice to see you. Beautiful photo of you and your lady um, there. Okay, so let's get into it. And I and I and and Paula is um, my staff, she, uh, my team. She's on here too, and she's gonna help us uh, moderate the discussion to tonight in the chat. So um, it's nice to see you all. Thank you again. So tonight we're going to talk about this $2,000 a month stimulus proposal that is on the table. There are so many YouTube videos circulating about this issue, and I want to talk with you guys about what this issue is and how it may impact uh, and what it has to say about immigrants, uh, what it has to say about people who are here in America who are undocumented and whether they're gonna, um, they're part of this proposal or not. And so, um, uh, so that's really what we're going to talk about, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys shortly. Nice to see you, Al Hahi um, from Sierra Leone. Awesome. So we have Africa in the house. Africa is in the house. Hi, Naomi. It's awesome to see you as well. And then Tony is watching from Ghana. That's awesome. And then Morocco and then uh, Guyana. Okay. And of course, Jamaica. I'm going to end it here with Jamaica. Jamaica is in the house. All right. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, so this proposal came up um, just a few weeks ago from um, a couple, on, on Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill. So this is just being discussed on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. right now. This is not law. This is nowhere near to being the law yet or anything like that. There's no appropriations, I should say, money that has been put into this quite yet. But this is a proposal that is on the table. And it was proposed by uh, Representatives Kana out of California and Tim Ryan. They introduced this legislation called the Emergency Money for the People Act. And it's actually H.R. 6496, if you guys want to look it up, but it has not officially been um, made its way through the, to the legislative process quite yet, okay? So you're not going to see much out there on it, but I have the bill, and I'm going to walk you through some of the major points of this bill. So this is the Emergency Money for the People Act, and these congressmen came together and said, wait a minute, Americans just received $1,200 in stimulus money if even 
even that much, right? Uh, some people got far less than that, depending on how much they made in 2018, right? And so they said Americans, over 20, what, 22 million filed for unemployment. A lot of people are out of work and $1,200 one time just isn't going to cut it, right? And so what they've come up with is this proposal of $2,000 a month for uh, someone who is single, uh, $2,000 a month for at least six months, and it can go up to 12 months. And so that's the issue that is being debated right Right now, um, in on Capitol Hill, um, with this proposal. Okay, so I'm going to um, share my screen with you. So give me a second here as I pull this up. And okay, here we go. So again, friends, this is called the um, the Emergency Money for the People Act. And I'm not going to bore you with too many details here. I'm just going to tell you the main points. This is what you really need to know. And so friends, the first thing you need to know, again, this is a proposal that is not a one shot deal. This is a monthly payment schedule, a minimum of six months. And there, if, and there, and if the employment to population ratio doesn't go back to the pre COVID-19 numbers, meaning that if we don't get our economy back the way it was and get people back to work the way it was before COVID-19 uh, hit, then this proposal um, that's on the table says, well, let's keep giving people money and up to 12 months. So it goes up to maybe one year, depending on what's going on with the economy. Now, how are people going to get this money? How are they going to pay people this money? And so I thought this was kind of an interesting um, approach here. So the government, well, not the government, but these congressmen, along with uh, 28 other congressmen and women, have proposed that people are paid um, through either with direct deposit into some bank account, or they would receive a check or friends get this a prepaid debit card, okay, prepaid debit card, or some sort of electronic transfer of payment. And so what they're talking about here that can be used on some sort of mobile device. And so Really what they're talking about here is like PayPal or one of those cash apps. I don't know how many of you use that cash app. I had to use it for the first time a couple of weeks ago when I ordered something uh, from someone and I had to download this app and it was super easy, right? And I'm not endorsing it. I used it just one time, but real people use these apps every day. And so under this proposal, they're trying to make it really easy for people to get the money and be be able to, you know, meet their needs, buy food, pay their rent, do whatever they need to do to survive. And so in this proposal, they're talking about um, uh, electronic transfer and apps, apps, right? Apps on people's phones, cash app, PayPal. And then here's an interesting point, friends. You, the, the bill says that the person who receives the money doesn't necessarily need to have a fixed address. Okay. Person doesn't have to have a fixed address. And so this is important because when you're talking about, when you're talking about, um, people who really need the help, people who really need the help, sometimes they don't have a fixed address. And so this proposal is contemplate and being able to uh, reach a lot of people. But I will say this, this proposal is right now supported only by Democrats on Capitol Hill. There is not bipartisan support for this um, proposal. Only 28, 28 me members of Congress, all Democrats are behind this so far. And that number is growing um, from what I understand. Okay, so let's get back to um, what else uh, is, is part of this. Now, this is the good stuff, right? This is the part where you really want to listen because this is about who is eligible for this proposed 2000, minimum $2,000 a month stimulus 
funding. And so firstly, no surprise, right? U.S. citizens, right? Or, or residents, permanent residents um, of the United States or green card holders. And then get this, guys. Look at what this says. Or those who are described in paragraph four of this legislation. Who in the world are they talking about in paragraph four? Let me just quickly scroll down and show you. Paragraph four talks about individuals in the United States who have been in the United States continuously since we declared a national emergency. So let's dig a little further. It says that these are individuals who are not a U.S. citizen and they are not green card holders and they have been physically present in the United States continuously since January 27, 2020. Okay. So, um, interesting, right? Because here's a proposal, uh, that's on the table. That's looking at providing funding to immigrants. Now we who are living here in America know that not almost nothing gets done on Capitol Hill unless there's bipartisan support. And so we know that Republicans, um, and even some Democrats are not in favor of providing any source of funding to immigrants who are documented, right? And undocumented, they just don't want to do it. Look what happened with the stimulus funding in the first place, right? And even some U.S. citizens were really um, disappointed when they didn't even receive their stimulus check because they're married to someone who is undocumented. And it just it was just totally unfair for a lot of people. And so if it went down that way with the the first stimulus funding, I could only imagine that um, they're not going to be too eager to give additional dollars or any dollars for that matter to immigrants, documented or undocumented, based on um, what we've seen in the past. So that's my read of it. So now let's go back to this because um, it's you might be saying, whoa, there's a lot of people who are in America who have been in America since. Um, January 27th, 2020, are all those people, you know, visitors? Who, who, who are we talking about here? So let's go back to um, this bill and um, keep going so that we have more clarity. So we know that it, the bill considers people who are documented and undocumented immigrants, I should say, and they must have been physically present in the U.S. since January 27th, 2020, and they continue to be present in the United States during the entire time that the payments are being made. So, uh, you know, they should not leave America, right, basically. And if they do leave America, this says that uh, they can't leave for more th for 90 90 days, right? For any period exceeding 90 days or 180 days in the aggregate, so to speak. So they put some limitations on here with regard to who all can get this money. So this is, I, you know, I thought that was a very interesting um, aspect of this. Now let's go back up to the requirements of who is eligible. So the next requirement we're on bullet point number five, the next requirement is that the person must be either must be 16 or older, okay, 16 or older, and their adjusted gross income, friends, uh, adjusted gross income cannot be more than the threshold amount. And so I'm going to break this down for you in a second, because they've set some caps here in terms of how much income uh, a person must not have, um, must be under, must be under, okay, threshold, right? Okay, so let's scroll down to um, to number seven, point number seven. And yeah, thank you for the hearts, likes. Give me some hearts, likes. Feel free to um, continue chatting there and let me know what your thoughts are. And also, I forgot to ask you earlier as... Um, I forgot to ask you guys earlier, put in the chat, let me know how you guys, how are you guys feeling these days? I want to know. I care about how, what's going on with you guys. Are you, are you great? If you're great, just say, I'm great. If you're worried, say you're worried. If you're saying, if you're, you could just be better, just let me know. I could just be better. Let me know how I'm just checking in, just checking in with you guys to see how are you feeling these days about immigration and just generally what's happening in the world. Um, I want to know exactly how you guys are handling things and 
feel in these days. So let me know in the comments. I will be reviewing them after this broadcast. Okay. So now let's jump back to this. Um, okay. So the question is friends, well, how in the world is the government going to find and identify these people who should get this money? Right. And so according to this bill, <laughs> what they're going to do, uh, firstly, uh, individuals who have a tax return on file with the IRS, obviously they're easier to reach than other people. So the first thing that th this bill says is that, well, um, you know, we're going to identify people and make payments to people based on the fact that um, they have a tax return on file. But if they do not, do not have a tax return on file, here's the next best thing. We're going to look at other agencies. We're going to look at other agencies to determine um, whether those agencies have data on the individual. And so what they're, they're going to look to the veterans affairs department. And they're also friends going to look at the social security administration department for data on people. Um, and so, but, and then they're also going to check, um, you know, if, if anyone who works for either the feds, the federal government, the state or local government, if any one of these individuals have received, um, payments of pension and annuity and all of that. That's another easy way to find people. Okay. So now let's get into the good stuff, the money. Okay. So again, friends, according to this proposal, this democratic led proposal, um, it's $2,000 a month for an individual, $4,000 a month if, uh, for a married couple. And I'm going to, um, refer to something else here as I go through this. So it's $4,000 a month to a married couple. And then if they have children, it's $500. Um, in some cases it's $500 per child from what I understand here. And then if it's, if the family has three or more children, they could get a one time. Well, not one time, but this is all combined monthly, right? $1,500. Okay. If there's three or more children it's $1,500. And I'm going to summarize this for you guys at the very end, just so that you're all clear about this. Now the, you cannot make too much money under this proposal, right? And so this proposal is actually very generous because it says that if it, it, it actually says that, you know, they will, give or pay, uh, the $2,000 a month to a single person who is earning less than $130,000 a year. And you know, that's a nice salary, um, nice salary in America. So it goes up very high here. So you have to be earning less than 130,000 a year. If you file single, if you're a couple married and you file jointly, you need to, um, the combined income cannot be more than $260,000 a year. Okay. So then the next question is, uh, well, um, and I kind of touched on this earlier, right? Like if you didn't file your taxes back in 2019, um, and no, I didn't say this. If you didn't file your taxes back in 2019, they will use the 2018 data. That's what this section up here says. Okay. Um, now if there is no IRS records, what in the world are they going to do? And we talked about the fact that they'll find people using the veterans affairs data and social security administration data and some other ways. But what they're going to do if they really cannot find people is they're going to create some sort of application process. Um, some sort of application process, I'm assuming maybe online in which individuals can apply, can put in their data and apply so that they can get this payment. Um, okay. We're almost done with this. It gets interest. It gets even more interesting guys. Stick with me now. This payment, this payment is not going to be considered income for IRS purposes. It's not going to be, it can't be used against you. It can't be considered as income going forward. And furthermore, if you're out there and you've been receiving certain, um, benefits, other assistance from the government, whether federal state or local government assistance, and you're receiving this type of income if this is passed and you're receiving this kind of income friends it's not going to be held against you meaning that you know if you're in a part of a program some sort of program that requires um 
requires, let me jump back on here, it's easier for me to concentrate. If you're part of a program that um, requires, if you're getting a program from uh, assistance from a government agency and they require that your income be less than some, whatever that number is, and all of a sudden you're receiving this $2,000 or maybe more per month, um, you know, $2,000 a month, they're not going to hold it against you with respect to your eligibility to continue receiving the other welfare benefit. So this is for people who are receiving other assistance from the state or feds. Um, they will not hold this new income, quote unquote, not really income, but this money that you're receiving, if this goes through, they won't hold that against you for the other program. So you can continue to be eligible for the other program. Okay, and so let us um, let me see if there's anything else I, want to share with you from this interesting um, proposal. Let's see. That might have been it. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I had to scroll all the way down. So thank you guys for your hearts. Um, uh, so that so let me summarize this interesting proposal. I don't want this to be too long tonight, but and I'm reading from my source is this right here. Uh, a press release that the congressman um, who introduced this, uh, Kana, um, put together, okay, on his website on um, U.S. House of Representatives page, website. And so in summary, this new proposal would touch what they, what they consider every American who is age 16 or older and you're making less than $130,000 a year, you would receive $2,000 a month for at least six months. Goes up to 12 months, depending on what else is going on with the economy. That's point number one in the press release. Point number two is if you're a married couple earning um, uh, less than $260,000, uh, you would receive at least $4,000 Per month. Um, certain families with children will receive an additional $500 per child for funding up to about three children. Um, next, um, this would, this proposal would not discriminate against anyone really so if you're if you have no earnings if you were unemployed or if you're currently unemployed you'd still be eligible for this um this program um and then the last thing that they say here that that's interesting to, is that um this program expands this it, it expands to millions of americans who were excluded from the CARES Act, uh, the CARES cash rebates. And so it includes, it will cover college students and adults with disability who disabilities who are claimed as dependents. So it gets very broad. And of course, as we saw in this legislation, it actually also touches immigrants um, who would be eligible because so long as you were here from January 27th, 2020, uh, and you continue to be here during the duration of the time that you're receiving the funding, um, you, you're you golden. So this is a very ambitious, but this guy, just so you guys know, this guy, Congressman Khanna, was, um, his proposals actually should be taken seriously because he was also part of the first group to put together that first stimulus funding proposal. And then he was also recently appointed and I'm not giving a plug to him. I don't know him. I don't know what he does. I just know him through this right here, but he was also recently appointed to the president's um, emergency um, something or another council dealing with stimulus funding and um, dealing with the coronavirus. I, I don't have the official name of that council. So, uh, but he was, a, he's part of that now. So they're collaborating with the White House and with Republicans on ideas about how to further stimulate the economy. So I think, you know, should we take this seriously? Well, yes and no. Because, guys, listen, let's be real. As we said earlier, um, the, bi the bipartisan support on Capitol Hill is a very difficult thing to achieve. And President Trump, as you guys know, um, is not, is not gung-ho about anything involving immigrants. And so I don't see them expanding this. Um, if This is just maybe the start of some new discussion. 
but this is going to go through certain changes, metamorphosis along the way. And it is, I'm almost certain it will not end looking like the way we talked about it tonight. It is going to go through a lot of compromises along the way. But what this says to me is that it looks like, you know, you know, they're looking to do something additional. They're looking to do more because a lot of people are in trouble financially. And so $1,200 is not enough. It's not even close to being enough in New York and in San Francisco and Chicago and those other big cities. So, um, so yeah, friends, that's what's going on. That's the big hype. This is the $2,000 thing. Um, and so then, um, so let's look at some of these interesting questions. And so Roseanne, Roseanne has asked, um, will this count as a public charge? And so I don't have an answer for that because, um, you know, we know that the stimulus dollars were, were, are not, from what we understand, um, stimulus dollars were not. The first stimulus funding is not counted. But I know that some other attorneys are very critical of the government and they would make the argument that you cannot trust the government. You never know. They may turn around and they may, you know, stab you in the back and it may very well and end up being detrimental to you and they could label you a public charge. Some people do think that way and uh, more power to them. I don't know yet whether this is going to, um, what the public charge implications are because I don't really, we don't know how this thing is really going to be structured in the end. In the end, that's what matters. And so if you have an individual who've never, who has not paid taxes, there's no tax return to pull from, I don't know how, how they're really going to figure out that piece. So it can get really complicated. So I don't have an answer for that tonight, Roseanne, but thank you so much for, um, for that, um, that question. Thank you, Nana. Nana says, God bless you for what you're doing. Thanks, Nana. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And then we had another question about public charge from Yvonne. And so Yvonne, I'm not certain about that completely yet. It all depends on how this whole thing will ultimately be um, structured. Um, thank you for that, Judy. Judy says, I wouldn't work with anyone else because you've uh, helped me with the free videos so much. Thank you for that, Judy. Judy I appreciate that. Um, okay, so I'm, we're getting a lot. I got a lot of questions about public charge. Uh, Swift, thanks for watching all the way from Belize. I've not, not made it to Central America yet. Um, okay, let's see. Um, Yeah, Jorge had asked a good question. If you're still if you're still working, um, do you get that money? I believe so because based on the legislation, there's no limitations around that. Um, it didn't restrict it to those who are unemployed. This is not, this is different from an unemployment benefit. So. I, I, I think that people who are still working, if this goes through, this is all hypothetical right now because it's not a bipartisan support legislation. You know, it's not supported yet. It has to go through a lot of iter changes. I was going to say iterations, but that doesn't sound too comfortable tonight. Tonight, it's time to relax. Don't need to say a word like iteration. Okay, so, but it's going to go through a lot of changes, guys, all right? So I don't know how in the end they're going to... Um, to, to take that, to, to how far they're going to take it. Sophia is asking a question about the ban. Is it the 60-day ban, Sophia? Uh, do you know how long how long the ban will be in effect? It's a 60-day ban. So um, unless you're referring to a different ban, like um, travel ban that's involved in Nigeria and several other countries, that's, that's really unknown how long those bans will, will be in effect. Um, Hi, Beverly. You know, I always find my Academy members um, as I scroll through the comments. Uh, again, more questions about public charge. Not clear on that yet. But when I get clarity as this thing develops, I will be sure to let you guys know, as you as you know. Um, thanks very much for that, Roseanne. Um, uh, Pamela says she agrees with my assessment. Let's just wait and see what will happen. Exactly. That would be the wise thing to do, Pamela. Wait and see. Um, 
And Jorge is asking a question that I can't answer right now, Jorge. Jorge is asking, well, what if you owe taxes? Do you still get that money? I don't know yet, Jorge, but that's a great question for legislators to consider. Um, that's not something that I can answer on this broadcast tonight, but great question. Thank you for that, Marsha. I appreciate it. And um, we're going to wrap up because I don't want this to be too long, but I wanted to come before you guys and share with you some recent things that every, that people are talking about. And some people are really excited about this $2,000 a month issue, but friends, don't get your hopes up too high yet. This is very ambitious, very, very, very ambitious and more power to them, but at least they're talking about additional aid. And that's what's most important because people really need the help. So thank you very much for um, watching tonight and share this video with other people. And again, friends, um, contact me, reach out to my office. My number is right up there. 718-301-9732. Uh, Call us 24 hours, book your appointment 24 hours. Uh, the next available slot for appointments, I want to say we're now up to next week, Wednesday. Um, so uh, next Wednesday, I believe is the next available slot. I haven't checked the calendar in a couple of hours, but it this fills up. So get in, get your meeting in with me, get your cases, get your case started. Subscribe to McBean Immigration TV if you have not yet done so. I'm trying to put out more content more consistently for you guys because there's so much to talk about. If you guys enjoy getting information like this from me, let me know in the comments and I will continue to do more broadcasts about public policy issues and how they may impact you. So thank you guys. Thank you for that, Leonard. Uh, Leonard, when I was a little girl, actually, I had a best friend named Leonard. So thank you for that. Thank you. He says, um, uh, thanks for for the information. Um, thank you so much, Carmen. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Regina, for being on. It's great to see you. Hi, Tom. It's great to see you. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Guy and um, guys, give us a call, and we'll be happy to get your case started. All right. Thanks, Ephraim. Guys, have a great night, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And by the way, watch tomorrow's um, video on um, McBean Immigration TV. I have a really good video coming out for you guys tomorrow about USCIS upcoming interview notices that are coming out. So watch tomorrow's video. It's going to be a, a really nice one. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.